uh, yeah, Disha, we wait for three minutes. Uh, you know, after the three minutes, we start. Hi, Petra. Hi. And hi, Valentina. Hi. Yeah. Can you so guys hear me? Uh, can yeah, you I can hear, hear you. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I can hear you. And you have been the most consistent uh, participant in the entire two-day conference. Valentina has been present. I think you have missed just one or two sessions. Uh, only and one. Okay. <laughs> it's very early in the morning in England. It's six thirty in the morning, but I've been here since. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I think you, know, you deserve a special prize for that. Yeah. And I'm I, definitely. Going to... <laughs> I tried. Least... It was. It's very interesting. So yeah. yes, I am doing uh -huh. it. So we'll just start uh, two minutes uh, uh, later, okay. you know, right sure. at six o'clock. Okay. How are you, Petra? I'm fine, thank you. I was uh, listening to some of the lectures, but I have a really yeah. small child that is yeah, I know that. Kept I know interrupting that. me, and that's why I asked about the later on when he goes to sleep at night, so I can check everything that I was interested in. Okay, because okay. Uh, he's one year old and all over the place, so he doesn't leave me much yeah, choice. Well, I, I understand. <laughs> you know, we had a speaker yesterday who's pregnant, so oh, it's really? the same problem with her, you know. So uh, we have to adjust the timings for her as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay, but still uh, with video conferencing, it's still better you know like uh, everybody from all around the world we are still able, able to connect that's the yes. best part yes yeah. i'm really glad that i was able to participate who knows if i would be invited or able to if it were in india so i think that this is a uh, quite even though it is crisis and a pandemic i think that this is a good opportunity for yeah, yeah. connect better and and of course we are ultimately uh, we are not able to contribute physically so if uh, this kind of a thing is there of course we have something in our uh, you know we can say that yes we have done this during this time it's not a total wastage of time right yes so anyways it's pretty yeah in time so yeah we can start now okay okay, okay. Yeah. we start so europe is a popular destination amongst tourists but with the advent of coronavirus and outbreak of pandemic Tourism across the world is facing a tough time. Here we have two eminent speakers who can throw some light on the road of Europe's tourism. We welcome Ms. Valentina Miskowska Petrovic and Ms. Petra Roseman. Ms. Valentina has a keen interest in rural tourism and has been involved in promoting the rural areas of southwestern Macedonia southwestern Greece and southern Albania in a cross-border cooperation between the rural communities around Prespa Lake. She also has a small travel agency focusing on sustainable rural tourism, including eco-tours, made-to-measure heritage tours, mountain biking, and walking. She especially focuses on local traditional food, the garden-to-table variety, she also promotes local produce and wine and has been extensively writing for local travel magazines. I welcome you, ma'am. Then we have Ms. Petra Rosman. She's from Croatia. She's editor-chief of a luxury Croatian travel magazine, Place to Go, and a public relations coordinator for International Tourism Fair, Place to Go. Ms. Petra is an experienced journalist with a passion for travel photography and creative writing. She has graduated print journalism and public relations at the Faculty of Political Science in Zagreb, Croatia, and she has been working as a travel journalist most of her career. Throughout her work, she has visited significant number of destinations around the world, wrote numerous articles, interviews, features, and reviews and participated in well-known travel fairs such as IPW USA and World Travel Market in London. I welcome you, ma'am. Now Thank I would request Ms. Valentina Petrovic to start her insight. Hello, everybody. My name is Valentina. I come from Republic of Macedonia in Europe. 
I have a keen interest in promoting the rural tourism in my country and uh, cross-border cooperation uh, with um, neighboring Greece and Albania. Unfortunately, that little part of that world, it's not very well uh, represented on the tourist map. Uh, hence, the rural communities are struggling uh, to develop a sustainable tourism and where we come from uh, to give them a lending hand of know-how and help put the area on the map. Um, unfortunately, during the COVID uh, pandemic, my country, actually the government of Macedonia, didn't do much for the um, communities or the industry as such, although um, come up with um, uh, some support for the tourists, Macedonian tourists to stay in Macedonia and that way um, help the tourism in the country. In, um, with, in, partic in, partic in particular, the government um, supplied vouchers to use the tourist des destinations with the, within the country. Um, the, total, the rural industry actually needs a lot of support and the support should come from the government in a way of training for uh, health and safety um, for a post-COVID um, uh, working uh, relationship between the tourists and the people um, who are offering the uh, the, the rural tourism. Uh, the network support of um, uh, roads, uh, media, and especially the social media presence is very important. We've been, as a rural tourism, uh, people who are into them, uh, rural tourism, um, they are trying to highlight the, pen, the benefits for, for, uh, the, for Macedonia itself and the local, uh, local communities in it, but also because the area we uh, help, it's right on the border between two other countries. We are trying to support um, the network and um, no, with the know-how to those uh, communities. We have, at the moment, we are helping communities in Albania on the Lake, uh, Lake Prespa um, to uh, get more of a social, um, social platform uh, being noticed on the social platform because the area is of a, a outmost na beautiful nature. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, sorry. Yeah, um, we are trying at the moment to help the communities in Albania around the Prespa Lake, uh, Prespa Lake uh, because the area is of uh, utmost um, natural beauty also. It's a very important uh, for um, um, uh, help the local flora and fauna, especially the brown pelicans, which are um, which live a, on the lake. The um, the rural tourism as such uh, brings uh, quite a lot of um, uh, foreign people into Macedonia. Uh, unfortunately, our local people are more interested to go on holiday to Greece, to Montenegro, to Croatia, to use them, uh, the sea rather than the mountains or the lakes we have, uh, because Macedonia is a landlocked country. Uh, so um, most of our... Uh, compatriots uh, rather travel across the border to Greece uh, than stay at home. Uh, so um, with our um, platform, we are trying to uh, make sure that the rural areas and communities are uh, benefit uh, from um, uh, from the support, also to bring the people close to nature, protection of the endangered flora and fauna, local fill, uh, local food, uh, the growing in production. We are known of producing um, excellent cheese. Uh, we've been producing wine for five thousand years, so um, we have a lot of um, a lot of things to offer when it's come to. Uh, 
if you like uh, eco food or um, e even eco tourism uh, because um everything we have uh, it's high up in the mountains uh, macedonia is not flat country it's a very mountainous um we have over 2000 um, peaks uh, we have a uh, three natural lakes uh, and 57 man-made lakes so we can offer a lot of a lot for adventure tourism uh, paragliding mountain biking um, spelunking um, upsailing and uh, with that also uh, the culture and heritage is involved because um uh, because of the history of macedonia as such um a lot of our churches and monasteries are high up in the mountains. So getting there is um, is a trek it for itself, as um, is um, a beauty. And also um, we start uh, we start um, working on a network of monasteries, which will. Um, afford uh, the young people or the adventure travelers, even families to stay in uh, to stay in the monasteries overnight. So the network is uh, keep growing uh, from day to day and we are very happy about it. Uh, but um, we are also working uh, for the sustainable ecotourism, uh, which um, Unfortunately, we do not get a lot of um, support from our own government. Everything we do is do uh, by ourselves, by uh, in in enthusiasts and the people who are um, involved with um, uh, small ways. They have a small, um, you know, enterprises, uh, farms, uh, ladies uh, taking people home, cooking for them, and so on. So, um, unless something is done on the um, governmental level um, in Macedonia and in Albania in particular, uh, this will be a very hard um, road to walk, if you like. Um, for Greece, uh, Greece uh, has um, um, some kind of a development for um, rural areas. Uh, they have a project for development of some um, rural areas, and um, that is actually um, it's quite quite a big help, especially for the uh, Lake Prespa area, uh, because um, the know-how from the EU uh, and their money are coming to help. Uh, the end goal of everything is the um, uh, self-reliant communities uh, who will be able uh, in a post-COVID situation uh, to um, take care of themselves, have um, tourists coming, uh, be safe and obviously healthy in a sense of not bringing the virus around. Um, and. Um, the work is still ongoing. Hopefully, we will have something uh, set, um, some kind of a working order set up for the next summer because uh, this summer is uh, already has been um, a total bust. Uh, we, as um, uh, people who work into the rural tourism, um, we've been always uh, on the lower uh, scale of the, um, uh, you know, uh, how much of the uh, gross uh, visits we have comparing to the um, well-known areas, tourist areas, but we are trying and um, according to the um, database of the, the European uh, CBI um, website, the rural tourism has been up for 4.4% every year since 2005 and 6 uh, 4.6 of, of percent of that are uh, the developing developing countries in Europe has been uh, visiting um, the less developed ones um, so uh, that is on the increase uh, biggest jumps in rural tourism in Europe is noted by the neighboring countries to the EU zone and the um, in, including North Africa for the last three, three years. And the median percentage is 7.2% across um, 
the, also the main increase is noted, which is quite important, that it's noted by the age groups. And um, age group 18 to 30, uh, who are on a low budget, choose to um, choose the rural tourism or adventure tourism, um, mountain biking, paragliding, rather than being on a beach somewhere in Spain, Portugal, Greece, and, you know, getting drunk, to be honest. And also the couple, uh, 31 to 44, um, which are um, also interested in new way, holistic approach um, to a tourism. So they choose the ecotourism and the rural tourism as a way of um, spending their money. Um, Macedonia as such is a um, country who doesn't do a mass tourism. It's um, a very of the low impact variety. And um, local rural tourism, it's only about 11% of uh, what Macedonia offers as a tourist destination, which is a little bit of a shame um, saying that because we do have a lot to offer uh, on the uh, rural tourism and eco-tourism uh, market. Uh, that's it, basically. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miskoleska. Uh, and I hope Macedonia is on the tourist uh, attractive spot soon. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. We, we've been putting a lot of work in the last seven years. Right, right. And it looks like a pretty nice place to visit. You know, I've seen a few pictures myself. It looks like a really nice place. I don't know how it's not a tourist attraction, <laughs> but I hope that happens. I hope so. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So now I request Ms. Rose to enlighten us about her th thoughts on the topic. Ms. Hello, uh, hi to everybody, especially to Valentina. Uh, Hello. In company from Macedonia. Uh, I just wanted to mention that we are also, we are having a travel magazine place to go, but we are also organizing a tourism fair place to go. And the first uh, country that was a partner country was Macedonia last year. So we were proud to present it and to uh, make your tourism situation better. We didn't expect this crisis and everything, so... <laughs> I think the, I don't think so anybody expected it. No. <laughs> no, but uh, I think that uh, once this is all over, that uh, Macedonia will be back on track to a very, very desirable tourism destination. Uh, I just wanted to say something about Croatia's uh, current situation regarding the virus and uh, uh, tourism destination. I have some uh, notes and presentation, uh, so you, somebody who doesn't uh, hear me very well has maybe a better way to look at it. Okay, so this is it. Just a second. I hope that everything is okay. Uh, so, uh, Croatia uh, has a neighboring country, uh, Italy is a neighboring country from Croatia, and since you all know, uh, it has been a hard, uh, hard month for uh, Italy uh, from the beginning of this year concerning the coronavirus. So, Croatia as a neighboring country uh, had a really big, um, we could see what will happen if we don't react uh, really fast. So, the the closeness of Italy uh, came as a shock and a wake up call for us. So um, the Croatia was early on uh, implementing uh, safety measures uh, regarding the epidemic. Uh, so in March, we had a complete lockdown. The schools, uh, the kindergartens, uh, everything was closed, stores except pharmacies and food markets also. Uh, public transportation uh, wasn't available except for taxi cabs and also there was a restriction of movement within the country. We couldn't travel from one city to another without a special pass uh, that were provided by the government and it was uh, usually just for healthcare workers and uh, for somebody uh, who could not work from home. Uh, so we had a very prompt reaction and it resulted in a very good epi epidemic situation. After a few weeks, uh, the number of cases were low and uh, 
in during May, uh, we the lockdown was over and uh, only limited. Uh, there was just some limitations for gathering of the people on the same uh, public spaces and uh, uh, especially for closed spaces. Uh, the lockdown and uh, so uh, the lockdown and uh, the pandemic, uh, as in other countries, uh, had a very big hit on the economy of the country. Uh, so, but the early measures uh, were very successful. So, the Croatia was uh, very early on the list of safe countries to visit once the borders were uh, again opened. That was during May. Um, so by the end of, uh, uh, so a lot of tourists ca came to Croatia and uh, that um, th the result was of course, uh, more cases per day, but uh, it still hasn't had, uh, it's not a very, very serious uh, situation. It's still under control and uh, the healthcare people are not in any uh, kind of danger of being put uh, in, uh, in jeopardy. So we had total of 7,600 cases and 169 deaths uh, and approximately 2,000 active cases now. Uh, there are uh, around 200, 250 new cases per day. And I know that these numbers sound really, really insignificant to a lot of countries that have much more citizens than we do, but we are a small country. Uh, with only a four million population, and uh, keeping the keeping the numbers low is also very important for us because we depend on tourism. Uh, we are satisfied with the numbers and the way that uh, the pandemic is under control, but we have to be very careful because uh, more tourists are coming in Croatia uh, each day, and uh, we have to have. Uh, measures included to just to be able to uh, continue this this uh, not not very uh, not very big growth uh, so some of the safety measures for croatia if anyone anybody wants to visit is uh, we are encouraging physical contact uh, distancing pardon uh, distancing uh, masks are um, masks are obligatory in closed spaces except for restaurants and cafes there are hand sanitizers uh, all over in, at each entry of the shops and stores. Uh, since uh, we had a lot more uh, tourists in Croatia for the last uh, couple of uh, weeks, there has been an increased number of cases and they were connected to the nightclubs and bars when after midnight people get relaxed and uh, forget about social distancing and uh, security measures. So the new rule is from uh, 14, October 14th that for 10 days uh, nightclubs and bars can't uh, work no later than midnight. Uh, our government has been uh, really uh, on top of everything and uh, uh, we were satisfied with the reaction, concerned about the economy, but uh, happy with the reaction concerning coronavirus. Uh, there was a web page dedicated only to stopping the epidemic, coronavirus HR, dot HR, and the Stop COVID-19 app was implemented. Uh, there are still special conditions for non-US citizens when entering the country. And uh, um, for the EU citizens, there are no limitations at the borders. Um, so this, uh, it, it has been a good, um, good situation for us to be part of European Union because uh, opening of the borders is really important uh, for uh, Europe's stability and uh, it has been uh, a good thing to have some kind of guidelines and to be able to uh, receive tourists from uh, other countries. Yeah. Uh, Petra, just a second. So uh, the speaker is saying that you have to be a little louder. There are some, uh, sorry, the audience. Just uh, okay, okay. I will, okay. Uh, so yeah. the current situation, uh, tourism situation in uh, Croatia, uh, after a severe loss uh, during April and May, uh, during the lockdown and uh, right after the lockdown, uh, the economic situation was very uh, bad. And uh, but since we had no uh, not a lot of new cases, we uh, the July and August was much better. We were uh, we opened the borders, and it has been 
60 to 70 percent uh, same number of nights as in uh, as for the previous years. There are uh, 675,000 tourists in Croatia per day. And uh, of course, this, this increases uh, cases in connected to summer travel seasons. Uh, the good thing is that new cases are uh, mostly younger people, 35 years old in, in, in average. But we have to uh, demand from them to, to be careful. And when they are coming back from holidays, not to infect the people that uh, are living with them, particularly uh, older people or healthcare workers. So uh, there are measurements and uh, there are some, uh, we just wanted them to be careful uh, so the tourism season can be continued and, and our normal, semi-normal way of living. Um, so the, the bad news for the rest of the season, for August and September, is that there are some countries that we depend on uh, for tourists. Uh, they have put Croatia on the red list uh, since we had more cases than before uh, during the couple of weeks. So it was Austria, Slovenia, Great Britain, uh, Germany uh, put two, two of our um, counties on the list. And that means that uh, they have to have a negative uh, test uh, before they enter their country when coming back from Croatia. And uh, our citizens uh, are also, uh, also have to have a negative test or a 14 uh, day isolation when entering the countries. Uh, so this of course resulted in um, a number of cancellations and uh, also cancellations of the planned, planned uh, summer vacations. The uh, su success of the remainder of the season is depending on, uh, the, of course, the number of cases, new cases. So we uh, are hoping that we will be off the red list soon and that we also will have a good uh, travel tourism season in September. Uh, so, so some hotels and hotel chains uh, in order to uh, stop people from canceling their trips are uh, doing some um, doing free tests for their guests. Uh, so there are not uh, any, any uh, new costs for people who are staying in Croatia. Uh, it is done in their rooms uh, or in the hotel. Uh, it is the, the results are within 24 hours and they can, uh, the test is valid for 72 hours so they can uh, go back to their country uh, without any extra expenses and they can still uh, come to Croatia. So this, this uh, are some kind of efforts that are made uh, to provide free and easy testing and to encourage tourists to stay on their vacations and uh, or to plan it for the rest of the yeah, rest of the year. Uh, so just a second, uh, you can see in this graph uh, are uh, where Croatia stands in uh, relations to other some other uh, European countries, uh, how many new cases she has. Uh, some uh, new cases she has uh, on 100,000 uh, inhabitants. So current uh, European uh, situation is that the travel is down by 45% compared to the last year. Flights are also uh, lower than uh, 50%, even though uh, after the lockdown and uh, in a couple of uh, last couple of weeks, the flights uh, were more often. Uh, there are travel restrictions and border limitation or shutdowns in most uh, destinations. And uh, the very confusing thing about Europe uh, travel right now is that uh, each state has its own rules and there are no common definitions uh, in European Union what does, uh, what constitutes a risk area. So for instance, Croatia is on the red list in some countries, in other countries is not. Uh, and uh, so, in order to have people uh, their um, their planned holidays to made uh, even um, how would I say uh, to help people plan their travels uh, during the summer and beyond and uh, stay healthy and safe and everything, there was 
a web page called reopen.europe.eu, uh, which provides current information on particular countries. So it is easier to plan a trip to Europe uh, through this web website. It, it gives uh, real-time information on borders, on available means of tra transportation, uh, what are the travel restrictions, uh, what are the public health uh, safety measures, uh, do, wh where are masks, face masks uh, obligatory, and other information. Uh, it is uh, updated uh, every 24 hours, and uh, it's uh, daily, and it is uh, available in 24 languages uh, of the countries of European Union. So this has been a great help for uh, European travel to because uh, all, we all need transparency and confidence in the destinations we are thinking about traveling to. So uh, the more information we have, uh, the, the easier it will be to uh, plan a trip or, uh, or maybe to just know the information and uh, do uh, maybe some kind of small break uh, right now. Um, so everybody wants to know and everybody's asking what is the future of tourism in Europe in general, international travel uh, and Croatia also. I'm, I'm sure that nobody knows for sure and that uh, we will wait and see uh, what will happen. But there are some kind of predictions uh, what uh, the tourism will look like uh, until we find the vaccination that uh, hopefully will uh, resolve all this situation and uh, uh, make possible uh, future travels, which we are all hoping. Uh, so the tourism industry was hit the hardest uh, in this uh, couple of months and the COVID-19 crisis uh, will cost millions of jobs and will have a great impact on particularly small and medium in enterprises. Uh, a rebound to pre-crisis levels is expected uh, not until 2023. Of course, this will depend on uh, economic vitality of certain markets. Uh, not all people and uh, no, sorry, not all countries depend on tourism. Uh, they are strong economically either way, but. Uh, or uh, this, this will be, uh, some, some countries will develop and some countries will uh, have a better situation uh, before other ones. We can expect rapid but uh, rigorous testing at ports and airports and tracing demands. Uh, uh, so we can expect, uh, once invented, uh, we also can expect that uh, there will be a vaccination confirmation um, well, once invented, we, we can expect that some countries will want to vaccination confirmation before they put tourists back in the country. And this is something that uh, we have to, uh, we travelers have to uh, keep uh, in mind that uh, maybe uh, getting certain visas or anything will be depended on uh, whether we had the vaccination. So this, this story will not end with it. Uh, so there are some criteria. I was uh, asking a lot of my fellow travelers, uh, journalists, friends, and uh, people in the travel community, what would be uh, the, their criteria in order to plan their vacation or holiday abroad in Europe or beyond um, by the end of this year. And of course, the closest, uh, closestness of the destination was uh, was one of the first criteria. Uh, not a lot, a lot of people would uh, go to airplanes right now and uh, be there for eight or 10 hours uh, straight. Uh, so there are a lot of more people that would travel by car or train destination or short hour flights, which is a good thing for Europe because uh, usually most of the destinations are available by cars or by short flights. Uh, of course, everybody's uh, looking at the epidemic situation of certain country. Uh, a lot of them are expecting low prices uh, and flexible cancellation policies. Uh, not just tourism was affected by this crisis. So I think that nobody wants to lose money and everybody wants to make sure that if they are spending on traveling, that they will get their money's worth and uh, 
uh, and be certain that they won't be uh, that, that they will be reimbursed if uh, if they could not could not travel uh, when they were planning to. So flexible cancellation policy. Also, they are expected expecting to uh, have the restaurants and cafes open, shops, museums, and public transportation. Also, um, a lot of people who are used to traveling are used to some kind of um, level of travel um, experience. And uh, of course, we are all trying to adapt to new situation, but uh, uh, it is more likely that they will be able to uh, want to travel to a certain country if the, the situation is uh, closest to normal uh, traveling as before. Uh, so high hygienic standards are a must and uh, no mandatory masks outdoor is a possibility. Um, this is not, this is possible for like uh, large cities and something, but uh, if a country has a policy of uh, outdoor masks, uh, wearing masks uh, everywhere, um, it's not a problem if it's in your country when you're at home and you know that uh, this is the only way that you can function. But when you decide to travel, I think that they will have uh, want to have at least some some kind of a normal experience uh, possible. Uh, of course, we also have to see a person a personal situation of a potential traveler. Uh, there are a lot of people that would like to travel and they are not afraid of the virus. They are, they can, uh, they are not, uh, they, are, they can afford to travel, but also uh, there are maybe working jobs that are not allowed uh, 14 days self isolation after they come back from their trip. So maybe if uh, they uh, are in contact, infected or in contact with the infected person, they uh, cannot allow themselves to be away from work for 14 days. So this is something also that is uh, crucial in uh, deciding whether to travel or not. Uh, also, a lot of uh, people are saying that they would like uh, passenger limitation on flights, which is... Um, good safety measure, of course, but this means that uh, airlines that uh, they are already so affected by this uh, crisis. And if the passenger limitation is on the planes, that means that they have to have uh, more expensive airline tickets than before. So it is possible that uh, long hour uh, flights will be accessible only for those who can pay for it uh, and because they will be more expensive uh, than ever. Uh, there are also some new travel trends uh, that we are expecting in the few several months and uh, maybe even years to come. Uh, as I already mentioned, domestic travels will, will be, uh, will be uh, popular. Uh, but it is also uh, very, we have to be very careful because, for instance, Croatia is a small country and we have a very nice seaside and the summer season is always uh, very popular. But And already our citizens are traveling to Croatia, are traveling on the seaside, and uh, we cannot depend only on them. We can maybe... Um, motivate them to travel more off season and everything, but uh, that won't be enough for the our tourism season. So it's, it's crucial to have foreign travelers as well. Um, it is uh, also like in Macedonia, like Valentina mentioned, our government has been co-funding uh, travels to Croatia and has had some uh, tax, uh, uh, some, tax uh, benefits for booking trips locally. And um, it is possible that we would want to stay close to home in the next couple of months. Also nature holidays, uh, exploring of the wilderness, adventure holidays, uh, camping and glamping will be more, more uh, popular since it uh, allows us uh, not to be in contact with a large number of people. Uh, 
because of the pandemic, uh, nature got a break and uh, from the pollution and more and more people are seeking holiday opportunities that allow them to be responsible, to uh, have sustainable traveling experience uh, and to, to just immerse themselves in the destination more. Uh, isolation holidays will also, of course, be a priority. Uh, the ones that will uh, be able to afford will choose private villas, boats, boutique hotels, quiet coastal lakes and mountain and rural locations, um, and avoid large hotels, big cities, uh, shared apartment accommodation. And for now, I think that uh, some hotels will have to adapt to the new situations uh, in order to not have, of course, buffet breakfasts uh, and include food delivery, uh, room, uh, room service, and also uh, be prepared for the, for the situation where the guests are infected, uh, have special rooms for isolation and uh, everything will have to be more adaptable and uncertain. Uh, remote work trips will also uh, be, be more popular. Uh, plenty of people will avoid, uh, point, uh, it's a new trend to have companies realize that they can allow uh, people work from home and they, uh, so this allows people not to use their vacation days. Uh, in case of uh, possible self-isolation, they can just stay at the, the location that they uh, chose. And if everything goes well, they can use their spare time uh, for exploring the destination. Uh, this will be uh, particularly uh, good for uh, off-season traveling and uh, for uh, last minute trips where you don't have to uh, say in advance, okay, I need to need some vacation time. And uh, uh, it will be good to use the special offers that the companies, hotels and destinations will offer. Um, so, uh, as a magazine, uh, we also have been doing some uh, efforts in uh, promoting Croatia so that uh, our own citizens are likely to travel to it, but also to encourage more, more uh, person to visit it. Uh, since our um, magazine uh, is uh, issued after the lockdown and uh, the, of the situation, we of course did not travel. And uh, so we prepared uh, our print issue uh, about Croatia that is 100% uh, dedicated to Croatia. And also uh, we, we've done a free English uh, online issue on issue.com uh, where we are doing a campaign uh, and uh, are hoping that the more and more foreign travelers when it will be able to do, they will uh, come and travel to Croatia. Uh, plans for the autumn and winter are also do the reportages about European and domestic destinations, uh, since so it is really hard to predict what will happen next. And uh, we are quarterly magazine, so everything that we, each magazine that we print is on the market for three months. And we will have to have a content that uh, can stand that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of time. So yes, this is the, a, a little bit about Croatia and European the tourism in general. So uh, I hope that everything will resolve soon and that we will be able to uh, travel not only in uh, Croatia, Europe, but to distant destinations. Thank you so much, Rosman. Uh, that was enlightening of the current situation in Croatia. Um, so there are a few questions uh, that, you know, the participants and uh, Dr. Paritosh Nandi has also come up with. So I'll start with uh, Ms. Koska. So Ms. Koska, uh, so that uh, there is this uh, Gallic Nick wedding of Macedonia, which sounds very interesting. Could you tell us, could you tell us about it? Of course, uh, Gallic Nick wedding uh, is basically a very old tradition. We can't hear you, Valentina, loud. Sorry, can you hear me better? Yeah. 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 Uh, Galicic wedding, it's um, a 
tradition which goes some quite a few centuries back, back and in the olden days the young men will go away uh, from November to May uh, to work somewhere else and then come home during the summer to do the um, uh, work on the fields and get married. So the wedding as a patron saint of the Galichnik village is St. Peter's. So on St. Peter's Day, which is the 12th of July, every year, the young people get together and a few weddings are happening. So um, the, the wedding itself nowadays, uh, in the last 40, 50 years, has been under patronage first of um, Josip Broz Tito, the president of Yugoslavia, as it was then, and now at, under the, pre, uh, the patronage of the current president of Macedonia, Mr. Pandorovsky. Um, it's um, the it's happening. It's the tradition is actually keeping all the elements of the um, old-fashioned age-long tradition of the marriage, including the food, the tradition, the clothes, everything what is needed, and it goes for four days. Usually, Macedonian wedding come are going for a week, uh, but this is a shorter version. Um, a lot of people in the last maybe 15, 20 years are coming from abroad to uh, take a particip participation. And um, the bride and the groom are chosen. It's a real marriage. Uh, the bride and the groom are chosen um, from the um, young people who come from the area or they might be living somewhere else but their roots are in the area of Galichnik or the uh, villages around uh, in the area of western Macedonia which is called Reka, Reka region. Um, it's a beautiful beautiful gathering it's three days and also quite interesting is that it does help a lot of the um, rural tourism um, so whoever comes for those three days not just um, is not just a part, essential part of the wedding, uh, but um, has an um, opportunity to see and experience the whole um, of the Macedonian life as it should be or it was in the bygone eras. A lot of tradition, a lot of um, uh, folk costumes. Um, the, the bride wears a costume which is uh, about um, 20 kilos uh, heavy, the, the whole costume with the silver jewelry and everything. So yeah, it's a very interesting um, it's a manifestation and it's um, happening uh, for St. Peter's Day every year. Um, if you are in my par part of the world, you should come and visit. It's really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Valentina. Uh, so now the next question is for Petra. It's by Dr. Paradosh. So he says that the business model in Croatian tourism is unsustainable. So this was reported by the Total Croatia News in 2019. Uh, is this a serious analysis of the news portal? What do you think? Um, it, it is a serious analysis. Uh, it states that uh, Croatian tourism depends um, too much on uh, seaside uh, and on Zagreb, and uh, it is very um, seasonal. So the summer is uh, with the high capacity for Croatia. But uh, uh, there are a lot of efforts the, done in Croatia to have, uh, as we call it, off season because we consider uh, autumn and spring to be uh, off season, and the summer is, of course, peak season. But uh, I personally think that we can make efforts and we, ha uh, we have to uh, have more uh, diverse tourism opportunities for travelers that are coming to Croatia. But I think that uh, the summer season will always be popular. And uh, when you, uh, a lot of people, when they think about Croatia, they think about the seaside, that they want to go sailing, they want to go to beaches. And, can make efforts to do off season, but it, it will still still have peak of the season in the summer. We can't uh, rule out the weather we have during the summer, and uh, it's something that will st stay. And uh, I, I don't think that uh, we will ever have so much tourists uh, during any other season than in summer. 
course, uh, we have to uh, not depend so much on it uh, as we do now. And, um, uh, and we, we need to do more about uh, other parts of the countries, uh, like uh, in Macedonia, rural tourism, and uh, uh, gastro tourism, bird watching, uh, adventure tourism, and to uh, have more more uh, people coming in, come in uh, Croatia during uh, the rest of the year. Uh, another problem for us is, uh, as the report already mentions, that uh, we don't have enough uh, number of quality workers work whole season. There are a lot of workers in the tourism sector that uh, just are deciding to work couple of months a year during the peak season and not to work uh, during uh, other uh, other seasons that uh, are not so popular and uh, they can't have same wages and same opportunities uh, as in peak season. So there are a lot of workers that are working in Croatia during the summer, but go in uh, Austria or in Italy to work during ski season in the winter. Uh, so this is something that uh, we have to have some human resource uh, problem solved. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the next question is for Valentina. Um, so Valentina, can you tell us about the uh, exact recovery pattern of what has been followed in the tourism industry in Macedonia, if there is a recovery pattern that you are following? Well, uh, well, it started uh, very slow. The government was very quick um, to close the borders. Macedonia had the borders closed for uh, quite a few months. And um, many of the foreign tourists who actually were in the country were stuck there for eight, ten, even, even ten weeks. Um, Macedonia, same as uh, like Croatia, um, had... Um, total lockdown. We couldn't go to any other towns. If you wanted to go, you had to have a special um, permission. Um, nowadays, um, the measures are a little bit uh, laxed, uh, but um, it's very much impacted the tourism, which was um, already established in the big places like Ohrid, Ohrid Lake. Ohrid is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The lake and the city itself um, also has an airport, and the airport just recently reopened. So um, those measures are taken as anywhere else, you know, mask, gloves, um, two meters distance, you know, you, you do the same thing like everybody else, but the, turi the tourism did suffer the qu quite a lot because Macedonia, it's not like Croatia, um, geared for a mass tourism. So the government come up uh, with um, uh, measures uh, like um, giving um, every family a, a certain value voucher to use within Macedonia to, um, to prop up the ailing or non-existent tourism because of the of the virus and so that was one of the things they did secondly they did uh, try to help a lot of, of the um, uh, small agencies with um, uh, again uh, issuing a travel voucher special travel vouchers from a to b so they they can take if you go from the capital Skopje to Ohrid, you are um, going to go via a particular agency who will take those vouchers rather than um, normal bus service or a train service uh, like that. So they did something, but not much. And um, I don't know, maybe we don't have a know-how. Um, to be honest, our Macedonia, which is shame we don't even have a ministry of tourism uh, our tourist office is under the uh, the ministry for Ec for economics so that is another minus because um on the top uh, the top people who are supposed to have a know-how about the tourism are not there um it's very slow uh, it's a lot of us um who have a small um small enterprises or agencies we do our best uh, but um 
everything is shut down and the borders are closed. So, for example, I'm involved in promoting the, lake, the Prespa Lake, which is divided between three countries. Uh, we are promoting that because it's a beautiful, untouched nature, and we are working with the villagers to promote the food, the, the, the flora and fauna, everything. Uh, we can't do anything because um, at the moment the borders are closed. Greece doesn't open the borders for anybody of the neighboring countries, and we can't go in. So um, a lot of small businesses are losing a lot, a lot. Right. Okay. Thank you, Valentina. Uh, so, getting back to Petra. So, Petra, in the so there is a question. I would say that in the past one decade, Croatia has been one of the uh, go-to spots for a lot of Asians, especially Asians, you know, Indians. So, due due to this uh, pandemic, how do you think would that affect Croatia? In the sense, uh, will you lower your rates of the uh, you know hotels, or how how are you planning to cope up? Uh, for now, as I've seen, uh, there is a trend of lowering rates uh, in hotels, but uh, it, it has stopped when the tourism season uh, peaked. In uh, was better than uh, expected in uh, July and August. Uh, of course, Asian uh, Asian travelers uh, are very important to us, especially. Uh, I live in Zagreb, in capital of Croatia, and I daily see a lot of tourists from Asia visiting our city, and I presume they are visiting the rest of the country also. Uh, I, 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 they are also inclined to visit Croatia, not just during the summer, but also during uh, other seasons. So um, I think that uh, we will have some strict... Uh, rules about entering the country for um, for travelers uh, that are not from European Union. I think that this will stay the same uh, for now, but uh, I think that uh, the hotels will adapt their prices and accommodation will adapt their prices uh, according to the de demand. I know a lot of people that are traveling uh, inside Croatia on uh, much uh, more luxurious uh, trips that they could uh, afford before because now everything is trying to save the the season as much as they can especially places on the coast that depend on uh, nice wet weather so it is a limited uh, time wh when this will be uh, possible to visit experience it in the right way uh, I think that uh, they will uh, adapt the prices and uh, make the most of it, uh, of this situation. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Uh, uh, the, I think the last question is for Valentina. Yeah. So, uh, Valentina, the question is that, uh, is uh, Macedonia planning to collaborate with other countries from other continents to increase the tourism since it's not that uh, huge? Macedonia. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, Macedonia as such has a lot of potential. Unfortunately, we are not very well known worldwide. Um, when we were in Yugoslavia, as Petra knows, most of the people will go to Croatia or Montenegro because they were on the uh, they were on, on, on the coast. Uh, Macedonia is a landlocked, although it has a lot of to offer. Um, unfortunately, we are not well known. We are trying. We are um, at the moment, uh, there is a talks uh, with uh, some Middle Eastern countries. Um, there is uh, established uh, routes, um, route, route, uh, flight route uh, with um, likes of Israel and Jordan. Um, there were talks of um, uh, far, far East um, Japanese people do come uh, quite a lot, but they uh, come as, to, as uh, Petra no noticed uh, the um, Asian people or the Far East people, they will come in a group and they don't mind which part of the year they will come, they will go to uh, the capital and then around the country, but they move on quite uh, fast. So on average, um, people, travelers who come to Europe to do Europe, you know, to do to few places in Europe. On average, they stay in Macedonia for three, maximum four days. And we do like to increase that. It will be great if uh, we are, you know, have some kind of um, um, 
business um, networking done with India because it's a lot of Indians who would love to travel and um, Macedonia is just a place for them. Uh, but um, another thing which is, um, comes into uh, play is the visa issue. Um, unfortunately, uh, Macedonia and India don't have um, diplomatic um, consul, uh, diplomatic um, uh, offices in each, con each, each other's countries. Our, um, our nearest diplomatic um, place is in Belgrade. So if you come from Bitola, where I come from, which is on the border with Greece on the south of Western Macedonia, um, I need a nine hour drive to get to Belgrade to get a visa. Um, and I presume is the same uh, with the Indian, whatever, you know, Indian person who like to travel. Um, his nearest um, Macedonian embassy, I think, is China. So, <laughs> so it's crazy. I mean, yeah. it would be lovely if, um, if it's, um, you know, it's India. I mean, I personally love India. I've been to India a few times and uh, thoroughly enjoyed every time I went. And I think that India has a lot of to offer. And I hope um, it will be same whoever visit Macedonia. To also, we, all, although we are very small, we are only 2.2 million people, probably like, I don't know, one of the sub suburbs of Mumbai. Um, we have a lot of to offer. So, um, um, if anybody wants to come and uh, talk to us to have a good um, um, tourist um, connections, yes, please call me. I'm more than happy to, to be there and help. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, I think we should conclude the session now. It was great talking to these two amazing ladies here. And uh, now we are already imagining Croatia and Macedonia, you know, on our next trip. So, yeah. yeah. Good to yeah. You. <laughs> yes, please do come and visit. We have yeah. the lakes and the mountains yes. and the food. <laughs> yes. So, and we also invite you to, to India to visit soon, as soon as, you know, the gateways open. And um, thank you so much for enlightening us. Hope to see you guys soon in Rio. Thank, thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Uh, thanks, uh, Valentina and Petra. Uh, hope uh, Petra and uh, me, maybe we can, uh, when things start and the international, you know, like, uh, the festivals and uh, travel conferences start. Maybe we'll uh, meet somewhere I because, so. yeah, I was in Goa uh, in November, I think in October 2019, when I met uh, uh, two people from Croatia. And uh, of course, um, um, Valentina, I'm longing to <laughs> meet you for a long time. So let's hope we meet uh, soon, but maybe this time in Sweden, because uh, you're going to Sweden now. Yes, I'm moving to Sweden. Yes. So, but how is the situation in England now? Um, the situation in England is funny. One day is good, it's open, and the next day, uh, next day Boris changed his mind and closed the borders. So, okay. <laughs> So at the moment, we have a lot of uh, countries which we put on the red list and they play tit for tat and they put us on the uh, on on their red list. So, yes, um, it's been an interesting, um, interesting few months, put it that way. I, um, as uh, Petra noticed, um, when Petra said that many people use the, use the car to travel, I didn't fly to Sweden uh, for um, house hunting. I drove 1,800 kilometers uh, via six countries because I was scared to fly. And when I got to Sweden, I couldn't believe it because the Swiss don't give a flying fig about the COVID or anything. I don't know. Everything was open. Everything was working. And I arrived in Sweden in my car with my gloves, with my sanita sanitation, sa sanitizer, you name it. I had it. And they gave me a funny look. <laughs> <laughs> I come out, I come out of the car, all dressed up, and they just look at me like this. It was some, it's interesting, put it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. Anyways, so um, it was uh, great to have, it's time for me to give the final uh, vote of thanks to all the speakers. Uh, uh, this was our last uh, session. 12th session in this two-day marathon conference. 
and valentina um, has been part of the first conference also which was held last year um, you know she had sent her message across and this year she wanted to come uh, in person uh, but uh, um, valentina i must say even though you have not been able to come in person but of course with your uh, presence in all the you know all but one uh, in the, i think you were not present in the stock market one i remember because i thought you know maybe you're not interested in the indian stock market <laughs> not uh, interested in investing in india <laughs> i must admit me and mathematics don't mesh so <laughs> the stock market <laughs> i do apologize i yeah, am sure I, it was a great um, presentation yeah. but um, yeah, yeah. It, i like the money just great. to spend them you see i i i like the money to spend them i don't <laughs> make them my husband makes the most of it so i just spend them okay so i actually noted that you are not there because that's the only session you were not there so but thanks uh, to you um you've been very enthusiastic and petra of course it's been very um, you know wonderful knowing you and i must tell you you have such a wonderful voice petra <laughs> and uh, you know like i don't know do you sing no no i was kicked out of the choir in high school so <laughs> i'm really bad at singing <laughs> <laughs> okay but you have a very beautiful voice anyways uh, all the best to all of you and um uh, we also uh, we also now need some rest because at our end uh, team to reality has been working for at least a month because the dates for this conference was declared last year only because we have it every year in august so last year we had it on 22nd and 23rd of august and uh, it was a proper conference you know physical conference uh, uh, a 22 day conference and then uh, we had decided on 21st and 22nd uh, uh, and we declared it then but when this covid thing you know surfaced and um, it was uh, february and we are not bothered about you know okay conferences there's so much time for the conference now because this time we were, we were thinking of making it really very big but then as time progressed and uh, we came to see that you know corona is not going away then we decided first we uh, thought was uh, whether to postpone it and then uh, we uh, was whether to cancel it but then uh, we thought like why not take uh, you know benefit uh, of, uh, of the situation um, uh, uh, and have it uh, on a web platform and uh, while there are benefits of having a conference on the web platform there are the negative sides also because and you know i must tell you uh, the last two days you know day up day before yesterday and yesterday was complete lockdown in my city which means you cannot uh, go out of your home also so which meant that i had to invite all my staff and to stay at my home so all my staff are actually staying at my home and we are walking all walking uh, till midnight and you know it's i'm cooking for everybody because now in the pandemic we don't have cook also so i'm cooking for the entire staff and everybody is staying at my home and so it's a mess but then it's okay we are, i mean still happy that we were able to do it anyway and um, all the sessions have been very successful and uh, i'll share the statistics later um, and maybe because tomorrow is sunday we'll work on the statistics later and petra of course as you were mentioning asking uh, it the video uh, it was live telecast today uh, all the sessions today were live telecast on youtube and uh, the videos will remain there so if you want to share or if you want to see later you can of course see and uh, thanks again and i also take the opportunity of um, thanking all our speakers for every session we had 31 speakers in to total for 12 sessions and everybody was present everybody you know respected the time and it, everybody uh, gave their full fledged full whole hearted effort so thanks take care stay safe and uh, see you soon see you soon yeah. maybe in india next time yeah 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 this time you to come uh, come down and stay with us valentina oh that's very great thank you very much i was yeah, looking yeah. forward to to this um, to this conference in person in india but covid happened so maybe yeah. next year will be in person can you yeah yeah sure, sure. 
you are invited and you stay with us when you come and you bring your daughter i don't know oh your my sons God. are Oh, are you are you sure you want my daughter Frosina in your house? <laughs> no, I don't mind. I think my daughter and your daughter are same age. Uh, yes, so, they are. Yeah. I uh, probably so they're going the... to ignore us. They just going yes, to. Yes, yes, yes. Like we are outdated for them, so don't worry oh, yeah. about that. Okay, hey, so, <laughs> nice, nice talking nice to you. <laughs> you too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.